Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this, good to see you again, and welcome back. Alrighty, so today we're going to talk about this supposed new information that has come out about the DNA in the knife sheath. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure we've known about this for, what, six months now? Going on almost seven months? This is not new. Now, they're going to use specific language that, just like in the affidavit, kind of contradicts themselves. They don't really 100% confirm that... It's his DNA. I mean, they do, but they don't. So all they do is say that they have a cheek swab that matches the supposed DNA that is on the knife sheath. Now, they are not even using this knife sheath as evidence anymore because there's a problem with the DNA. But now they're saying that it matches up. Okay, I'm not going to deny that. Obviously, he's there for a reason. But once again, you're not telling me anything new. We already knew that the knife sheath had Kilberg's DNA on it. But let's hear what they have to say and we'll use their own words against them. New details in the Idaho murders investigation. Prosecutors now revealing a cheek swab taken from suspect Brian Koberger is a statistical match to DNA found at the crime scene. Okay, statistical match. Okay, not a 100% confirmation. Statistical. So to me, that means they're playing a numbers game. Now again, they had like, what, 20 DNA cells to work with originally on this? That is not even enough to make a real profile. So again... Look, this is just my opinion. What they're telling you, okay, this is the mainstream media. You can take it for whatever you want. And I apologize if there's a lot of background noise here. It's kind of noisy, but... So you can take it for what you want. But to me, they're not telling me anything new that we don't already know. This is, not, this is a nothing burger to me, in my opinion. Koberger is charged with stabbing and murdering four University of Idaho students last year. The key piece of evidence, a knife sheath next to the bodies of Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan. Investigators had compared. Okay, again, so that was their key piece of evidence, and then they decided to not use it because of a problem with the DNA, DNA genealogy testing on that. Now, again, they're going to say that it does match up. Okay, great. It matches up. But we already know that he was off the scene, okay? We already know that he has something to do with this. You don't end up in an orange jumpsuit in jail for no reason. You have something to do with it. What part he has to play, I do not know yet. But what the mainstream media and law enforcement and the affidavit and the PCA are telling us don't make no goddamn sense. So this is why we have to sit here and question everything they say. I don't, it's getting frustrating. That to familial DNA found on trash outside Koberger's parents' house. But after taking a swab from Koberger himself, prosecutors now say the two DNA profiles are a match. After a comparison... Okay, so if that is absolutely true, then that is a bit of a problem. But like I just said, we already knew he was there. We already knew that he was, you know, pinged and, and caught on camera. Here's the thing, though. <clears throat> Again, I, I hate to keep repeating myself, but the affidavit and the timeline... And how everything went down in the PCA do not make sense. So again, I, I go back to when he got arrested right here in Pennsylvania. Who else did you arrest? It's very hard. You can have your own opinion, but to me, it's very hard to convince me anymore that if Brian Koberger did this, there had to be somebody else. Of the DNA profile of Koberger and the knife sheath DNA. Prosecutors writing the same profile is, quote, at least 5.37 octillion times more likely to be seen if the defendant is the source. Okay, what does that say? If the defendant is the source. So what is it? Does it match? Is he the source? What the hell is going on here? Now, I looked up the word octillion. Octillion is basically a fractional number, so it's a 1.1 with the nine zeros behind it. So this is a very fractional, very small amount, okay? But they're trying to make it sound very uh, exorbitant, but it's not, it's a very small amount. So again, 
just not enough to convince me here, guys. Look, again, sorry to have to go back to that, but David and PCA, but this is what you wrote. This is what law enforcement wrote. This is what the mainstream media is pounding down our throats, okay? So if you could explain that to me and make it make sense, I'll believe you a little more. Up until now, you ain't telling me anything we do not know. Then an unrelated individual. Police department, search warrant, come to the door. The night Koberger was arrested at his parents' Pennsylvania home in December, officers in Washington state served a search warrant at his apartment. He was indicted by a grand jury last month. He chose to... Uh, that grand jury, the secret grand jury that indicted Brian Koberger out of the blue, right when Bethany was coming up with possible exculpatory evidence. But, mm, I'm sorry, that just never sat right with me. You guys can think what you want on that, but to me... They're hiding something a lot bigger than just DNA. Stand silent at his arraignment, prompting the judge to enter not guilty pleas on his behalf. The indictment charging Koberger with four counts of murder in the first degree for the killing of Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal, Gonzalez, and Mogan in their shared home. The family wants to move along. They want to get a conviction and move move past this as much. Well, it's hard for the family to move along right now because. The prosecution hasn't even talked to them. They have not been able to talk to the prosecution. Don't believe they are under a gag order, but they don't really want to talk. So because they don't have any information. I think that what a horrible position that must be in. So right there, I mean, if I was the prosecution, why would you not want to talk to the victim's family? Like, yeah, 100%, this is what we got. Don't worry. But here we all are because the prosecution and, and the powers that be don't want to tell us what the hell's going on. Why? Why? As much as you can move past a case like this. <clears throat> will face trial set for October 2nd of this year. The trial will not be October 2nd. Do not expect it to actually take place in October. This is going to get delayed. It's going to get pushed back. The defense hasn't had time to look over the evidence because the prosecution won't goddamn handle it, hand it over to them. So, you know, it's going to be a cat and mouse game for a while. I mean, don't be surprised if this trial does not start till I don't know, April of next year. Maybe. NBC News has reached out to Koberger's team overnight and has not heard back. Oh, so, all right, Aaron. So we know the trial is going to be later on this year, but this seems like a real blow for the defense. Yeah. Now, I'll admit, if this is this does not look good at the moment, but again, it's it's kind of not really new evidence. It's not really something that we don't already know. Um, if, okay, if they would have told me that they found DNA on a sock or like in his car or something in his apartment, boom. You know, that would have nailed it for me. It's the same shit, though. You told me the same shit I've already heard. This is not new. So, again, this is, the, to me, is my opinion, this is the mainstream media just hyper-sensationalizing everything, trying to get out. everybody all stirred up. This is what they do. Uh, his lawyers have already said they need more time to decide whether yes. they're going to offer a formal alibi. They're also saying they haven't had a... I'm very interested to hear what the alibi would be. Very, very interested. Does he have one? I'd love to hear what it is. Enough time to review all the evidence following last month's grand jury indictment, having to go through thousands of pages and hundreds of hours of recordings, a hearing to decide whether to pause proceedings on the grand jury indictment is set for next week. But clearly, there's still a lot more work to be done to build out their defense. Indeed. Hoda. All right. Aaron McLaughlin for us there. Aaron, thank you. Well, like I just said, absolutely. It's going to take forever for the defense to go through 51 terabytes of, of information, whatever that may be. Um, they still haven't got any real evidence or anything, you know, information wise from the prosecution. So, you know, in my humble opinion, I just think the defense is, is just been a leg down ever since the trial started. And I don't think it's fair. And <clears throat> to me, this isn't a fair trial. This is not justice being truly served. And I'm getting tired of misinformation and telling people, you know, I don't know. These are just my thoughts and opinions. I'm not saying this is fact. You guys have, of course, the ability to make your own choice and think what you want. But I want to thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure as always to be with you. And I'll see you soon. And remember, do not be afraid to ask those hard questions.